Welcome to BVS Pragati channel. In this session, let's understand about counters. So, what are counters? They are digital devices which are used to count number of pulses. So, there are two types of counters, synchronous and asynchronous. In synchronous counters, one clock input is applied to all the flip-flops, whereas in asynchronous counters, the clock is applied only to the first flip-flop and the output of the first flip-flop will be is the clock to the next flip-flop and so the output of one flip-flop is the clock to the subsequent flip-flop. So we see that the outputs vary asynchronously with respect to the clock and such counters are asynchronous counters. Let's have a look at asynchronous counters and in asynchronous counters first we'll go ahead with a simple uh, counter which is a, a mod 4 counter or a 2 bit counter. For 2 bits, to store 2 bits you need 2 flip flops. So here are 2 flip flops where I am using JK flip flops and both J and K are tied together and there a high is applied to J and K. Okay. And clock is applied to the first flip flop and output of first flip flop is the clock to the next flip flop. Okay. So we see that the first flip-flop output changes with the negative transition of the clock whereas second flip-flop output changes with the negative transition of the first flip-flop. So let's have a look at the timing diagram. So with respect to JK flip-flop and both J and K are high, what is uh, the output? The current output is the toggle of the previous state. So if the previous state is low, the current state is high and if the previous state is high, the current state is low. So now we see that at the negative edge of first pulse, clock pulse, what happens? The first uh, flip-flop, so output undergoes a transition and it becomes high. Because earlier state was low, it toggles, JK flip-flop toggles and it becomes high. Okay. And Q2 remains in the same state, that is zero. Now, at the negative edge of second clock pulse, what happens? Q1 undergoes a transition and it... Uh, and it becomes low again and Q2 continues to be now Q2 undergoes a transition at the negative edge of the output of first flip-flop okay so the output of first flip-flop is now low so Q2 undergoes a transition since the earlier output was zero now it becomes high so it goes high so now uh, Q1 again undergoes a transition at the negative edge of third clock pulse so it becomes high again q2 continues to be in the same state at the negative edge of fourth clock pulse what happens q1 undergoes a transition and becomes low again q2 undergoes a transition and becomes low again so we see that the uh, so we have 0 0 0 1 which is 1 okay 1 0 and 1 1 so you have four different states so that is a so this, hence such counters so this is a this is called a two bit counter a mod four counter because there are four states so for example if you want to count four states how many number of flip flops are required that is given by 2 power of n so 2 power of n is equal to 4 so the number of flip flops required are 2 and if you want to count eight states you need three flip flops if you want to count 16 states you need four flip flops so this is a mod 4 counter, a 2 bit counter, it is also called a ripple counter because it is changing like a ripple at the transition of each clock. Okay, the output is rippled through all the flip flops. Hence, it is called asynchronous ripple counter. Okay, that is what is written here. So, the, uh, the exterior clock is connected to only the first flip flop, that is what we have seen. Flip flop one changes state at negative edge of clock from the diagram. Okay, this has been discussed. Second flip flop changes stand, uh, state at the negative edge of Q output of flip flop one. And clock pulse fed into flip flop one is rippled through all the counters after propagation delays. Hence, this counter is called ripple counter. So, number of states in the counter is given by two power of n, where n is number of flip flops. So, this is a two bit counter and a mod four counter okay now let's go ahead and discuss about decay counter which counts 10 states okay so here is a asynchronous decay counter and we are using jk flip-flops to construct the decay counter 
so this decade counter should count ten ten clock ten pulses okay ten clock pulses so both j and k are tied to a high okay and clock is applied to the first flip flop output of first flip flop is a clock to the second flip flop output of second flip flop is a clock to third flip flop output of third flip flop is a clock to fourth flip flop now let's understand the number of flip flops that are required we have seen that if you would uh, if number of states is uh, for example 8 so you need 2 power of n is equal to 8 so n will be the number of flip flops so n should be 3 so 3 flip flops are not sufficient to count 10 states so we should go to the next state that is you need 4 flip flops now with 4 flip flops you can count 2 power of 4 that is 16 states but we need only 10 states so after counting 9 it should go low so after counting 9 what are high QA is high and QD is high so we can take both the outputs and connect as inputs to an AND gate because if you observe the truth table of an AND gate output of an AND gate goes low when both the inputs are high so since QA, QA and QD go high only in the ninth state so the output is low and this is applied as clear signal to all the flip flops and the counter is reset after the after counting ninth state so let's have a uh, look at the timing diagram so this is called morton counter it's a four bit counter okay now let's have a look at the timing diagram so here is the timing diagram so we, we see that at the negative edge of the first clock what is happening QA is undergoing a change since J and K are high okay QA out, output Q will be the toggle of the previous state since it was zero earlier now it becomes high QB will undergo only at the uh, undergo change only at the negative edge of QA so since negative edge has not yet happened it becomes it is still low QC is also still low QD is also still low now at the negative edge of second clock what happens QA, QA again toggles to low okay now since it's toggling low QB now undergoes its transition at the negative edge of QA and it goes high okay QC continues to be low QD also continues to be low at at the third at the negative edge of third clock what is happening again QA under toggles to a high state qb remains in the high state qc remains in the low state and qd also remains in the low state now at the negative edge of fourth clock what happens qa toggles to low state okay since it's toggling it's going low now qb undergoes a transition now it goes from high to a low state and becomes zero qc now toggles and becomes high qd continues to be low now at the negative edge of fifth state, QA undergoes a transition from 0 to 1, QB continues to be low, QC continues to be high that is 1, QD continues to be 0. Now at the negative edge of sixth clock pulse, what happens? QA goes low, since QA is going low, at the negative edge of QA, QB undergoes a transition and it goes to a high state. QC continues to be in the high state, QD continues to be low, that is 0. Okay, in the negative edge of 7th clock, what happens? QA undergoes a transition from 0 to 1, QB continues to be high, that is 1, QC continues to be high, it is 1, QD continues to be low. In the negative edge of 8th clock, QA undergoes a transition and becomes low. QB undergoes a transition because this is negative edge and becomes low. QC also undergoes a transition because QB is uh, at the, uh, so this is a negative edge of QB. So QC goes low. Now we know that QD undergoes a transition at the negative edge of QC. So this is a negative edge of QC. QD goes high. At the negative edge of 9th clock, QA undergoes a transition and becomes high. QB continues to be low, QC also continues to be low, QD continues to be high. 
at the negative edge of 10th clock both are high QA and QD now are applied okay to the NAND gate one is now seen at the input of NAND gate till that point it is 0 0 0 1 1 0 like that but now both QA QD are high output of NAND gate goes low and clear is applied to all the flip flops and the entire flip flops are reset okay and that is what is described over here so decayed counter is also called mod 10 counter with 10 counting states number of flip flops required are 4 flip flops and this is the truth table of jk flip flop where both, when both j and k are high the current state is the toggle state of the previous state if previous state is 0 current state is high previous state is high current state is low so with modulo 16 counter or 4 bit counter we can count from 0 to 15th state hence for mod 10 counter what we are doing after 9th state that is 1001 all the flip flop should be cleared for that what we are doing we are using a NAND gate because NAND gate's output goes low when both the inputs are high so here is the true table of decade counter at clock count 1 all are 0 0 0 decimal value is 0 at 2 decimal value is 1 at 3 QD is 0 QC is 0 QD is uh, QB is uh, QB is uh, 1 QA is 0 decimal value is 2 and at uh, fourth clock it is 0, 0, 1, 1, so decimal value is 3 at fifth clock 0, 1, 0, 0, it is 4 sixth clock pulse 0, 1, 0, 1, it is 5 seventh clock pulse it is 0, 1, 1, 0, it is 6 eighth clock pulse it is 0, 1, 1, 1, 7 at ninth clock pulse it is 1, 0, 0, 0, it is 8 at tenth clock pulse it is 1, 0, 0, 1 decimal value is 9 and at the 11th clock pulse, all the counter resets its output back to 0. So that is all about decade counter. So more in the next session. Thank you. Thanks a lot and I wish you all the best.